it's huge. I mean, it's the biggest opportunity that I I could you know ever dream of. This is really a dream come true. Main event, a Strike Force card, um, headlining for the women. It's going to say a lot. You know, if we're able to deliver, like I believe we will, and draw the numbers and. Uh, do everything. Uh, it's going to prove what we've been saying along, what Strike Force has been saying all along, is that you know the women definitely hang with the men. We can deliver entertaining fights, and uh, that's what this business is all about. People want to be entertained, and we're definitely going to entertain on March third. I just think it's kind of hilarious that um, Misha said she doesn't like me or anything that I've done, but then she just said that I helped make her dreams come true. So. Um, that's a little bit of a contradiction, but uh, I agree with her and most of what she just said. This is uh, something I've been aiming to accomplish for a very long time, and you know, I, I don't say I can I cannot say that this is all me. I'm trying as hard as I can, but you know, people like Scott Coker, who who have you know been an advocate for women's fighters ever since the beginning, when you know a lot of people weren't, and um, I really appreciate all the people that have put time and energy into making this fight happen, and we're not going to disappoint anybody in this fight. Um, I don't think it's not only just better for women's MMA in the long run, I think it's also better for Sarah Kaufman in the long run. I think that the, um, the fight that she would get for the winner between me and Misha would get a lot more attention you know, than a fight between her and Misha right now. And I think she's kind of being a little ungrateful that she's getting a lot more interviews and a lot more interest you know, towards her opinion you know, because of all of this drama that was created. And um, she's gotten more attention now than she did when she was champion, you know? And so, um, I, I don't think it was a slap in the face. I think it's just something that needed to happen. And I think it's kind of um, all these girls are saying I've talked my way into a title. It's just a mean way of saying that I was smarter than them and figured out a way to, you know, make as much progress in six months as they could in six years. Um, you know what I think this boils down to is that this, uh, bot, at the end of the day, is an entertainment business. And this is definitely the fight the fans want to see the most. And I think that that's the fight that Strike Force should deliver. You know, it's all about the fans, what they want to see. And, uh, you know, absolutely, I think this is going to get the most attention. Um, you know, I feel for Sarah Kaufman and her situation because, uh, you know, I think on paper she is still the number one contender. She's done a lot of work to get where she's at. But, um, Marketing standpoint wise, this is the fight that's going to do it. This is the fight that's going to make or break it, and this is a fight that needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have a different diet, but it um, involves a lot of starving and peeing. <laughs> so, I don't eat and I drink a lot. Um, so that's a little different. And uh, actually, the thing, I feel a lot better at 135. I've had arthritis since I was 19 years old. I've had three knee surgeries, and um, cutting down to a lower weight, my joints feel way better. I feel like a different person. I feel way faster. and. Um, I feel like this is probably a weight that I'll be more comfortable at than 145, actually. Because I wasn't cutting any weight. 145 is my walking weight. Um, you know, from the very beginning, I, I wanted, you know, I've known that fighting Chris Cyborg and beating her is the main end goal. Um, in light of her testing positive for steroids, uh, I think it might be a little more fair to kind of try and get her to fight at 135 because once she's off the of steroids, it would be easier for her to cut down to the weight. And if she decides to do some other steroid that's hard to be tested for, then the weight cut would make the doping just as much of a detriment as it would be a help to her. So um, in light of her testing positive, I'd probably insist on fighting her at a lighter weight. It's harder when you're a girl because um, it's you can't just walk into a new gym and have people respect you just from your record or your history. and. Um, you kind of have to prove yourself to each new group of people uh, at a time. You know, that you don't have any success that carries over in the way that the men do. So, um, you know, when I first started MMA, the first gym that I went to, uh, no one would pay attention to me or help me at all. And you know, they they asked me to pay too much that I could that I couldn't afford. So I went to a different gym and the GFC where I am now, and the coach wouldn't spend any time on me, and I just put it in my head that I was going to force these people to respect me. And so I came in there earlier than any of the guys did, and I left after all the guys were done. I made sure that I was training before them and I was training after them. And this went on for two months before my, my coach actually did any kind of hit work with me. And um, you know, we just, you have to do twice as much work to get an equal amount of respect, and I am willing to put that work in because, you know, unfortunately at this time it's necessary. The looks part, I think, is, is more of a gimmick. You know, you get people to look originally that don't know anything about women's MMA or even in MMA in general, you know, because they, it's something different. I mean, when do you see two girls fighting and when do you see two good looking girls fighting? You know, it's something that people will stop and look at. And, you know, if you see two girls fighting on the playground or something like that, you'll stop and look and be like, hey, look, it's two girls fighting. And then, you know, you'll, you'll keep walking. You don't keep fans like that. But I think that you can get people, you know, to stop and look for a second with that. You don't 
retain fans with a gimmick, but you you know you rope them in, in the first place with that. And I think that you know that's why we don't see ring girls fighting. You know because yeah, sure they're pretty, but you know if you actually stop me like after you're like oh those two pretty chicks fighting, you're like oh Jesus it's a disaster, and then you you know you'd move on and you wouldn't watch the rest of it. But if you first stop me oh those two great pretty girls fighting, you're like oh my God that was a really cool you know like head kick. Oh my God that was I've never seen a takedown like that before. Oh my God that's a great transition to the ground. You know that it's the actual sport and skill that makes people stay. But you got to show them something bright and shiny to look in the first place. I think, uh, yeah, you know, based kind of going off what Rhonda said, you know, and that is the truth of the matter is if we can uh, get something to draw the attention and then deliver the skill set, you know, that's where we're going to start to change the minds of, of the men and, and women as well. But um, I think our, our main audience is men, so we're going to target that a little bit more. Um, I think the women are an easier sell because they see women, they don't care if they're pretty or they're not, they just like the fighting. You know, the men are a little different, they want to see you know, the pretty girls, and they see the this, this skill set delivered and they become fans of us as athletes and then maybe later down the road, you know, it won't take as much of the, the pretty angle to uh, get them to actually enjoy the entertaining fight. Are you the same, Rhonda, you want to change um, the minds of men? I disagree women? a little bit more um, because, yes, more of the, the MMA demographic is men, but I think that with putting on more women's fights, it would appeal to more women. And if you pre if you started attracting just as many women as men, you would have twice as many fans. You know, and it, it does help to change you know the, to get the men looking as well because they're already MMA fans. But I think that promoting women's MMA fights, you know, I see so many. I've had so many women come up to me and be like, I was never into MMA before until I saw you ladies fighting, you know, and now I love it, now I'm into it. Oh my God, I love watching you guys fight. I want a body like that. I started doing MMA because I saw you girls and you're gorgeous and I want to look just like you, you know? Like, I think that one demographic isn't more important than the other, but I think that um, it is, you know, we got, we got to try our best appeal. My fighting name is Rowdy Ronda Rousey after Rowdy Ruddy Piper, you know? like I. I obviously take uh, some inspiration from uh, pro wrestling. You know, I had a Hulk Hogan wrestling buddy when I was a kid, which coincidentally I used to rip his arm off all the time, and it was sewed on with dental floss over and over. And uh, you know, Gene Gene LaBelle is one of my coaches, and he used to do pro wrestling. And one thing I noticed in wrestling that that people liked more than anything else, it had like storylines and backstory. There was a reason why these two wanted to fight, you know, and something was being resolved by it. And I think um, playing up that part of it, you know, pe like I said. It's, analogy all the time that you know people talk about their sport like it's their favorite TV show you know they gossip about you know players like oh this football guy did this and doesn't like that guy and that happened on that team like people want to get into it and if you make it more than just two people locked in a cage and fighting if you make it seem like it it means something or resolve something or you know then I think it, it makes it just much more interesting so yes I do think it's important and I, and I do do it on purpose you know it's it, none of this has been an accident uh, no, I, I mean I'm gonna go to the Olympics because uh, it'll be cool just to be a spectator for once. But um, I know what's required to be the best in the world in judo. I know that the lifestyle that I need to live, and I just was not enjoying it anymore. You know, I think you get to a point where you're not learning new things. You're just learning how to do the things you already know a little better. And I, I just didn't really feel like challenged or you know interested in, in it anymore. You know, and that's the great thing about MMA is. Every single day, I'm learning things that are entirely new and foreign to me, and um, I just I wasn't willing to be miserable for four years to be to possibly be happy for one day. You know, it wasn't worth it to me anymore.